The 2021 NFL Draft is just two weeks away in Cleveland, Ohio, and on this show, we're going to give you our first round mock draft. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this channel that we like to call Time to Football. Glad you guys are joining us, especially if you guys are premiering this as we show this on Thursday night. If you guys are premiering this and joining us in the chat, how you guys doing? I'm going to be joining you guys in the chat as well. And just to let you know that I'm going to be joining you guys in the chat, I will type an irrelevant word just to let you know that I'm there. Okay, so let me type the word out right now. Boom. Okay, so I'm in the chat. So as we're reading off this mock draft, please let us know your thoughts and your opinions and your analysis and let us know if you agree or disagree with this player going to whatever team we read off. So it's going to be lots of fun for you guys uh, that are joining us as we are premiering this. And vice versa, if you guys are listening to this on iTunes, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash time to football, so you can stay up to date for all the NFL draft coverage that we've got for the next couple of weeks, including a live draft reaction show on April 29th, the night of the draft. 7.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, five minutes before the first round starts. Join us live, and we're going to be chatting with you guys as you guys are chatting with us on YouTube. We're going to be talking to you guys on camera. And as we are watching the NFL Draft off screen, you're going to see us on YouTube. Watch the NFL Draft on your TV as well. Join us. It's going to be so much fun. We did this last year, and it was lots of fun. And this year, it's going to be even better. You do not want to miss it. The person that joined us last year for the NFL Draft live reaction show was Michael Watson. If you've been a fan of Town Football for the last year, you know that he joined, he joins us for things like the mock draft, NFL draft related stuff. Well, we had a recording of this mock draft with him a couple of days ago, and the audio on that ended up being uh, pretty booty. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, scrap that footage and just do a solo mock draft. And maybe next week, we, we could get Mikey on the show if he has the time. Why is there a red mark on my collarbone right here? <sighs> Those hickeys, man. I'm telling you. They're savage. Uh, but yes, the mock draft. A couple things to note before I get into this first round mock draft. And this is very, very important. Okay? There is no such thing as a perfect mock draft. Just doesn't exist. Okay? I know this isn't going to be right 100%. I might get 5 to 10 players correct. I mean, last year we got 10 players correct out of 32. Uh, we got Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Makai Becton, Tua Tukavailoa, Justin Jefferson, Patrick Queen, Derek Brown, Brandon Ayuk, Chase Young, and Jeff Okuda. We called correctly to which team was going to draft them. So maybe this year we'll get another 10. Maybe it'll only be five. I don't know. But please keep that in mind when you're watching this mock draft. Okay, there's no reason to get upset if your favorite team does not draft the player that you want. I'm a Falcons fan, and I would love if the Falcons traded back to acquire more picks, and they drafted Micah Parsons in the top 10, and then they traded back into the first round and get Najee Harris. I, that would be a dream scenario, but I had to be realistic, and I had to put my bias and my pride aside and just go off of what I'm hearing. Okay, so this mock draft is based off of what I'm hearing, off of the rumors in the NFL community, and off of the NFL news. Okay, this is no way in shape or form supposed to be biased or anything of that nature. Because I know a lot of people, when they watch mock drafts, they think, one, you're dumb for saying that a team or a player is going to go to their favorite team. And two, you have no idea what you're talking about. How can you get upset about something that hasn't happened yet? So no need to get upset. Keep it with an open mind. This is just based off of what I'm hearing. And pick by pick, I'm going to give you my thought process if I were that general manager, what that person would do. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there's going to be trades in this mock draft, so it's going to be lots of fun. First off, with the number one pick, let's get right into it. With the first pick, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars drafting. And actually, what's really cool about these lights behind me, I can change it to whatever color corresponds with the team that I am talking about. So let's turn it to a Jacksonville Jaguars teal for you, Shad Khan. Because you're going to have a new franchise quarterback in Trevor Lawrence as your number one overall pick. I mean, there's not much to really say about this other than that, okay, Urban Meyer would not have taken this job if it weren't for Trevor Lawrence being available as the number one overall pick. I think if the Jaguars had the number two pick, 
No way is Urban Meyer taking this job. He wants Trevor Lawrence to be his franchise quarterback, and he's going to build this team around him. One of the best prospects to come out into the draft in a very long time, Trevor Lawrence is the number one pick by the Jaguars. So what we're going to do is, as we are reading off the the players and the picks, I'm going to have a draft board on my computer off screen, and I'm going to be updating it, and uh, you guys can keep along with that. So I already typed in Trevor Lawrence's name, as you can see right here, and this is an order of... Uh, which team is going to be drafting in which pick. So we already have Trevor Lawrence as the number one overall pick. Now we go to the number two pick with the New York Jets. And just like Trevor Lawrence, I think it's becoming more and more apparent that uh, with the New York Jets, as I'm turning this set now to green, you're going to have Zach Wilson be the next franchise quarterback of the Jets. General Manager Joe Douglas has just come out and said, he wouldn't have traded Sam Darnold if he knew the position that he was in the NFL draft. If they had a later pick, they would have kept Darnold. The fact that they traded him away and he said what he said about having a high draft pick, you're going to go with a quarterback. And Zach Wilson is slowly, slowly, I think at this point, it's probably a given that he's the number two quarterback in the NFL draft. Some people argued that maybe Justin Fields, but to a lot of NFL personnel, they believe that it is Zach Wilson. So, that, so Zach Wilson is going to be a New York Jet. And I'm going to be switching this over real quick so you guys can follow along if you guys are watching this on YouTube that Zach Wilson has the attention of the New York Jets and will be the number two pick. Number three, oof, the San Francisco 49ers. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is this is rough because I struggled with this for a very long time. I did not know whether they were going to draft Mac Jones, whether they were going to draft Justin Fields. I said last week that they were going to draft Mac Jones. That's what the rumors are saying. And this was before Justin Fields' second pro day, that Mac Jones was going to be a San Francisco 49er. It's not what I want to see. I would really love to see Justin Fields as a 49er. But I believed last week, past tense, that Mac Jones was going to be the 49ers quarterback. And then I really thought about it, and I just... I don't know. I, I, my logic and my brain cannot get past the fact that Justin Fields is going to get passed up on. And a guy that got so much or had so much success in college under big pressure situations, a good dual threat quarterback, athletic as heck, could make this 49ers offense dynamic. And after a second pro day, I feel like the 49ers fall in love with Justin Fields and they draft him. At number three overall, I know, I know. And I'm still debating on this. I don't know. When I said that the mock draft can't be 100% perfect, this is probably where it's going to start to go downhill because if Justin Fields just gets passed on and Mac Jones becomes a 49er, which could happen because Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan favored those pocket passers, then this whole draft is going to get messed up. This number three pick is so important in determining the trajectory of the rest of of the first round. Reasons why Mac Jones could be a 49ers because Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan, uh, when they were in Washington and they wanted to draft Kirk Cousins in the fourth round, well, they had to make the general manager at that time pretty happy because he traded all these draft picks. So they went ahead and got RG3 with the number two pick, but they knew that Kirk Cousins was going to be better and they drafted him later on in the fourth round anyways. And it turned out that they were correct that Kirk Cousins ended up having a, a better career. So... I could see them getting Mac Jones, but I'm going to go ahead and say for the sake of this mock draft that they're going to get Justin Fields. So let's switch over to our draft board and uh, say that Justin Fields has been taken. So now that is three quarterbacks. By the way, I don't know why this green line is outlining it. Don't mind it. But there are three quarterbacks now taken in the top three picks, which is expected by many. Now this is where it gets interesting. The number four pick, the Atlanta Falcons. A lot of teams are talking about trading up with the Falcons to get that number four pick. But I don't think that there's going to be a suitable team that is willing to trade up unless Justin Fields were to get it passed on. Because if Fields gets passed on by the 49ers, you have teams like the Broncos that are willing to give up whatever they need to give up to go get Justin Fields as their quarterback. However, with a fourth pick... If Justin Fields being taken at number three, 
I don't think anyone would really, besides maybe like the Carolina Panthers, would want to trade up with the Atlanta Falcons to get Kyle Pitts because that's the next best player available. But after trading for Sam Donald, I don't think that the Carolina Panthers would want to give up more draft picks. So I think that the Falcons are going to stay put and they're going to get Kyle Pitts as their next tight end. So Hayden Hurst is their tight end for the time being. And people may question, well, why do you want to get a tight end when you have Hayden Hurst? He was pretty decent last year. Number one, people have to realize the concept of depth, okay? Because Kyle Pitts could be a good wide receiver or a tight end. Just put the label wide receiver right next to his name if it makes you happy. And number two, he's the best player available. And people are saying he's a good tight end, one of the best tight ends to come in the draft in a very long time. You cannot go... Wrong with Kyle Pitts. No one's going to call that a dumb pick by the Atlanta Falcons. So I have the Falcons at number four taking Kyle Pitts. Let's show you our updated draft board and uh, type in Kyle Pitts' name. All right. Now we're over at number five. Now, if the 49ers drafted Mac Jones, then I feel like the Broncos would trade up to go get uh, Justin Fields with the Falcons leaving the Kyle Pitts available and the Bengals would now be in the decision or the conversation to go get Kyle Pitts with Pitts gone and the Bengals needing offensive line help also needing wide receiver help as well. I'm going to say that they go down the route of getting a solid wide receiver on this team and they're going to draft Jamar Chase from LSU. And let me give you my explanation on why they would pass up on an offensive tackle like Sewell. Jamar Chase played his college football with Joe Burrow. That's it. That's all you really need to know. Other than that, Jamar Chase has been compared to someone like Julio Jones, one of the better prospects in the NFL draft at wide receiver since Julio Jones. Didn't even need to play last year to prove that he's one of the best players in this draft and a very good pass catcher. Jamar Chase could be a pro bowler his first season in Cincinnati with Joe Burrow back and healthy, hopefully. By the start of the season. We still don't know about that yet. Uh, But let's go ahead and change. uh, Or update the draft board. I would not be surprised if they go with Sewell. Now you've got the number 6 pick. And this is the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are in a very interesting spot. They could go wide receiver. A lot of people are saying. Because of the weapons that they want for Tua Tagovailoa. But I feel like with Will Fuller being signed. By the Dolphins to a big deal. I think they're going to pass up on a wide receiver unless Jamar Chase were to fall to, fall to them. Then I think they would take Chase, but I don't think they would take Devontae Smith. Instead, I think that they would give protection to Tua Tagovailoa, and this is where you would see Panay Sewell from Oregon get drafted by the Dolphins. I think it was something ridiculous where uh, it was maybe one sack, two sacks, or maybe no sacks at all uh, in his college career or since he was a sophomore in college that – uh, Panay Sewell gave up. So it's something ridiculous. I don't know the stat 100% of someone knows. Please comment below so let us know. But um, I think that Sewell is going to be the next offensive tackle for the, uh, the Miami Dolphins. And it's not going to be a bad choice at all. Get that good bookend for Tua Tagovailoa. Improve that offensive line. Let's look over to our draft board now and update the number six pick with uh, Panay Sewell being taken. All right, now this is where it's interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So you see here at number seven, okay, we've got the Detroit Lions on the board. This is going to be very, very interesting. Remember how I mentioned that there's going to be trades in this NFL draft? Well, the first trade that we predict to happen in this mock draft will be with the Detroit Lions, who have come out and said that they are willing to trade back in the draft to acquire more draft picks. That's what was said by the Lions. Which team is willing to trade up and which player would they trade up for? We had three quarterbacks taken in the first three picks. The fourth quarterback taken in this draft could be either Trey Lance or Mac Jones. Quarterbacks could be going fast. If you want to Jump ahead of someone like the Carolina Panthers, who are at number eight. You want to trade with the Detroit Lions and a team that is saying that they're willing to do an RG3 type trade and trade whatever picks they need to trade 
is the Washington football team. They are willing to trade whatever it takes to go up to the number seven pick so that they could draft Trey Lance. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's not something that I would do if I was a general manager. But the Washington football team, according to multiple reports, love Trey Lance. And they really, really do need a quarterback for the future. Lance can run a pro-style offense. Maybe that's something that Ron Rivera loves. And I think he would fit in just nice with the Washington football team as well. So, Trey Lance, with the trade, with the Lions, Washington could move up to acquire Trey Lance from pick 19 to pick 7. And the Washington football team could give up a first rounder, a second rounder, a first rounder next year. They're willing to do whatever it takes to jump up 12 spots. Okay? So keep that in mind about this trade. Let's go ahead and switch the names on this draft board because I have the Lions picking seven. But if I switch this over to Washington via Detroit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight this blue just to let you guys know that it indicates a trade. All right, so we, let's type in Trey Lance right here. But what that means is that we got to scroll down to uh, number 19 and switch out Washington's name with the Lions. And the uh, Washington. Perfect. So now the Lions have the 19th pick. There are multiple options that the Lions could go with with that seventh pick. They really do need a wide receiver uh, with... Devontae Smith still on the board, but I'm just going to go ahead and say that the trade back because the offer that the Washington football team is willing to make is too good to give up. Uh, number eight, now the Carolina Panthers are in a very interesting spot because you could get a quarterback because if you don't have faith in someone like uh, Sam Darnold, who's on a, maybe a two-year prove-it deal if you were to pick up his fifth option, Teddy Bridgewater is under conversation as well of potentially getting traded, but I feel like that the the Panthers at this point are content with getting uh, or passing up on a quarterback and getting offensive line help. And the next best offensive line on that board is Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. Panay Sewell has already been taken by the Dolphins. Slater is going to be a good player, worthy of a top 10 pick, not a bad pick at all. Just keep on improving that offense in the best way possible, okay? You've already got your weapons. You don't necessarily need another breakout wide receiver in this year's draft like Devontae Smith. You have one of the best running backs in the NFL, and you just trade it for another quarterback just to see what he's got. So at this point, if you really want to improve the offense, you've got to go with that offensive line, and you've got to get Rashawn Slater. So let's go ahead and update that for you guys. At number eight, the Panthers are selecting Rashawn Slater. Very, very interesting that we've got the Denver Broncos on the board because they didn't make as much of a push as I expected for someone like Drew Locke. I expected that they would or a backup or a veteran quarterback to compete with Drew Locke because I kind of expected that, that they would sign someone in free agency. Maybe they made some offers out there. I don't know, but they did not get their guy. So if you need a quarterback still at this point and you don't have faith in Drew Locke, which the Broncos do not have, they're going to get the next best quarterback available. Probably the only remaining quarterback that is worthy of being drafted in the first round, and that is Mac Jones from Alabama. If he falls this late at the 49ers pass up on him, I don't feel like the Broncos will need to rush at any point to get Mac Jones. I think naturally he's just going to continue to fall and Mac Jones could fall in the laps of John Elway and George Patton and that general manager in the Denver Broncos. But also keep in mind with George Patton on the Broncos team, he has connections with the Minnesota Vikings. When he was with the Minnesota Vikings, the quarterback at the time was Teddy Bridgewater. If before the draft, they make a trade for Teddy Bridgewater, then you can expect them maybe passing up on Mac Jones at this point and going in the direction of, uh, let me see what other needs they need. They need offensive tackle needs. They need cornerback needs. So then you could get Patrick Sertan. Uh, they need a tight end as well, kind of, sort of, uh, just to pair up with no offense. But I, I think if Teddy Bridgewater is not traded from the Panthers to the Broncos, if George Patton is not interested, then you could see Mac Jones being a Denver Broncos. So let's go ahead and update the draft board. Denver Broncos, you've got your quarterback in. 
Mac Jones. Oh, Jerry World. Cowboys, number 10. Very interesting. This could be a team that has a lot of draft picks, by the way, and could trade up in the draft if they really, really wanted to. According to multiple reports, they're very interested, or Jerry Jones is at least, he loves, absolutely loves Kyle Pitts. He's infatuated with him. But the talk around the NFL, a lot of general managers are saying that it would be dumb for Jerry Jones to trade up or for any team to trade up to get Kyle Pitts. He's a very good player, but he's not worthy of necessarily being traded up for, especially for the Cowboys if you're at number 10, trying to get up to like maybe number four. So I think the Cowboys are content with number 10, and I know it's not the sexiest pick in the world, but you're going to have to swallow your ego and going to have to build that defensive line because you desperately need depth on that defensive line. And I feel like the best edge rusher at this point is Quiddy Pay from Michigan, could do some damage for that defense, that defensive line to pair him up with Demarcus Lawrence. So I have the Cowboys at number 10 drafting Quiddy Pay as the first edge rusher off the board. Updating that real quick on our wonderful Google Sheets. And again, let us know your thoughts and your comments down below as we are talking about uh, this mock draft. But that kind of concludes your top 10 right there. The Giants are in conversations of getting more weapons on that offense. So Devontae Smith is still available on this board. Not because he's a bad player, just because these other teams need other needs. The Giants cannot pass up on one of their biggest needs being linebacker. And the best linebacker in this draft is Micah Parsons. I don't see them passing up on Micah Parsons at all. This guy's a beast. He's athletic. He's a stud. He's fast. He's strong. He's physical. Do not pass up on Micah Parsons because what last year told us was that Devin White, who was a top five pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is the anchor of a defense, a linebacker. If you have a superstar linebacker on that team, they can do some damage for that defense. And Micah Parsons could be that guy. You've already improved that offense so much throughout free agency. And then in the second round, if you have some wide receivers available, maybe someone like Elijah Moore uh, could be available round two, pick 10. Yeah, draft Elijah Moore in the second round. But as of now, do not take Devontae Smith. You already have enough weapons. You could use more, but you have enough for the time being. Bolster that defense and get Micah Parsons. Update that on the draft board. Number 12. Oh man, this is pretty apparent at this point that Nick Sirianni and the Philadelphia Eagles really, 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 really do need some weapons on their team. Devontae Smith has been passed up outside of the top 10, fell out of the top 10, and he's still on the board. You would think that the Eagles are not going to pass up on Devontae Smith. Yeah, they're definitely not. They're going to grab Devontae Smith, the second wide receiver off the board. He's going to be a a next big weapon for uh, Jalen Hurts. They desperately need that. I know Jalen Rager in that experiment could still work out, maybe. But uh, if you want a good wide receiver one, maybe even a wide receiver two, if Jalen Rager just goes off. I don't know. They threw to really no one. Zach Ertz is on his way out. Dallas Goddard is going to be the pretty much the only reliable weapon at this point. You're going to have to get another wide receiver, Devontae Smith. Let's go ahead and update that on our draft board. Devontae Smith from Alabama has been taken. The Chargers at number 13. I think the biggest win for them is if Panay Sewell can somehow fall to the Chargers, they would absolutely love that. They would, but it's not going to happen. I think at 13, the experiment with Chris Harris Jr. being signed from the Broncos to the Chargers did not work out. They still need some secondary help and take the best cornerback, in my opinion, available. It's between him, uh, Patrick Sertan, and J.C. Horn. I think it's Patrick Sertan from Alabama uh, that's going to be taken. So the second straight Alabama prospect is going to be drafted by the L.A. Chargers. Uh they address the cornerback situation. Chris Harris, like I said, is a disappointment. They could also use a, uh, an edge rusher or a safety, uh, an offensive tackle, like we mentioned. But I, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're going to get Patrick Sertan to, bol- uh, to bolster their secondary. So let's go over to our uh, draft board, Patrick Sertan, the second. No disrespect to his dad. Has been taken. Number 14. 
the Minnesota Vikings. This is where it gets very, very interesting. The Vikings are on the clock at 14. What do the Vikings need? They need an edge rusher. They need a corner, right? Sertan has been taken. You could take J.C. Horn. But a trade offer is going to be made by the Chicago Bears to move up from number 20 to number 14. And let me explain why. The Bears are going to make a deal with the Minnesota Vikings. They are tired. General Manager Ryan Payson, that whole entire crew, the franchise is tired of disappointment after disappointment on offense. They want that offense to be great. They're going to trade up six spots and whatever they needs to take to make, to take the next best wide receiver. The first tier of wide receivers is almost gone. The last one available of that first tier of wide receivers is Jalen Waddell from Alabama. The third straight Alabama prospect to be taken at pick number 14 by the Chicago Bears, Jalen Waddell. Team up, team him up with Allen Robinson. There's no guarantee that Allen Robinson is going to stick around. Uh, and Jalen Waddle could be your wide receiver one one day, but they want to help that offense out so much because it's just been a disappointment at this point for the last three years, I would say, four years, even if you want to talk about before Matt Nagy's time. So let's go ahead and update our draft board. We've got number 14, the Bears, trading up via Minnesota to acquire... Jalen Waddle. Let's go ahead and mark this as blue to let you guys know that it is a trade. Jalen Waddle to the Chicago Bears. And let us know your thoughts. You agree with that? You disagree? Could you see it happening? Uh, Vikings via Chicago. And they fall down to number 20. The Vikings do. But I think they're content with that. It's not a big deal for them. Uh, at number 15, the New England Patriots. Okay, so if Jalen Waddle somehow falls to number 15, I think that they're going to continue to bolster their offense and get a wide receiver in Jalen Waddle. But with the Patriots, the interesting thing is you spent all this money in free agency on that offense with Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith, Kendrick Bourne, Nelson Aguilar. And yeah, you signed some defensive pieces as well with Devonka Chow, Henry Anderson, Matthew Judon. But you can never have enough rotational defensive players. And speaking of those superstar linebackers, if Bill Belichick wants to learn from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have his former quarterback in Tom Brady, that team thrived after having a superstar linebacker in Devin White. Micah Parsons is gone. Bill Belichick and the Patriots now can draft a defensive piece that is going to be a good player for years to come. And Jeremiah Uwusu. Koromoa, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, from Notre Dame. The linebacker, they need a linebacker. They did sign Kyle Van Noy, but they need a linebacker. You can never have enough defensive pieces, and it, they would take the best wide receiver if somehow, some way, Jalen Waddle were to fall, but I don't feel like that's going to happen. I feel like the Patriots are instead going to get Jeremiah Owusu Koromaya. So let's go ahead and update our draft board. And it seems like a, uh, you, you know, this kind of pick, Seems like a Bill Belichick kind of pick as I'm typing this out. Just because it's not like the flashiest pick, but somehow, some way, he's going to develop him into a superstar potentially in the NFL. You never know. So, Jeremiah Owusu Koromaya to the New England Patriots. Number 16, the Arizona Cardinals. Okay, so this is very, very interesting. The Cardinals do not have a third round pick or a fourth round pick in this draft. And I think they would love to trade back to acquire some picks. If you're Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury, that's what I would be thinking. You need some help at the cornerback position to replace Patrick Peterson, but there are some good cornerbacks available later on. However, the best cornerback available at this point, I would say is JC Horn. Some people would say that he's the best cornerback in the whole draft. Well, the Titans, I would say more than the Cardinals, need a cornerback so much more desperately. And they're willing to trade up because they have multiple draft picks that they could give the Cardinals to draft in what they believe is to be the best cornerback in the draft. So I'm going to have the Titans trading up to go acquire J.C. Horn from South Carolina, the son of Joe Horn. And like I mentioned, they need to replace Adoree Jackson. They have a big 
hole to fill at the cornerback position. And I think that the Titans are going to move up with the Cardinals to number 16 from number 22 to acquire J.C. Horn. Let's update that real quick so you guys can get a visual of this. The Titans, number 16 via Arizona. And they acquire J.C. Horn. And that means that the Cardinals are going to drop to number 22, but they're going to have additional picks too. Whether it be in the second round, the third round, whatever the deal is that the Titans make with the Cardinals, it's going to happen. Hopefully. Because this, like I said, it's going to be 100% perfect. That was a joke, by the way. Uh, so let's go ahead and update that to Blues to keep you guys in the loop that it is a trade. This is a dream scenario for the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders don't need the sexiest pick in the draft. They've made sexy picks, some off the wall, some questionable, huh? Kind of like when they drafted Cleveland Farrell and picks like that. They spent so much time on their defense and trying to get these sexy picks like Henry Ruggs and all that. You've got to make the safe pick. You've got to go with your gut. You've got to get offensive line help. And the rumors are out there and the news are out there that the more tape that they see on Elijah Vera Tucker from USC, the more that the Raiders love this guy. So I have the Raiders selecting Elijah Vera Tucker on, from the offensive tackle position with the 17th pick in the NFL draft. And if they don't like Vera Tucker, I think they're going to go with another offensive tackle, maybe Tevin Jenkins and a lot of other players out there, Alex Leatherwood, Jalen Mayfield. But I, I think after losing Gabe Jackson, after losing Trent Brown, You've got to make some strides on that offensive line. Elijah Vera Tucker is going to be the next Las Vegas Raider. So let's go ahead and update that. Elijah Vera Tucker. Number 18. This is the second of the draft picks for the Miami Dolphins. Who? By the way, I just want to go ahead and mention that the Dolphins did a very, very good job this past season and finessing everyone. I mean, when they traded back from number three to number 12, and then they traded back up to number six, they essentially got an extra first rounder out of that trade. And good job by Brian Flores, who's been killing it as a Miami Dolphins head coach in that front office as well. But number 18, the Miami Dolphins, you already addressed your offense in the first round. Go defense at this point. And I have the Dolphins at number 18, taking the next best available edge rusher, which is a big need, and Jalen Phillips from Miami. Stays in Miami, and you're going to have to fill that hole after losing Devon Gachow to the New England Patriots. So Jalen Phillips, some people would say that he is the best and most most athletic edge rusher in this draft. Uh, some people say it's Quiddy Pay. That's why I have the Cowboys taking him higher. But eight picks later than Quiddy Pay, the next edge rusher that is going to be taken by the Miami Dolphins, Jalen Phillips. Let's type Jalen Phillips' name right here. Now, the interesting number 19 pick by the Detroit Lions. So you remember, they traded back with the Washington football team to go in the spot. I'm, I'm going to explain why right here. The deal was too good by the Washington football team to pass up. And the Lions desperately needed a wide receiver. And even though Devontae Smith is so good, and you can't pass up, pass up on him, you're going to get some additional picks later on, whether it be in this draft and next year's draft, to get more offensive, offensive pieces around you. This is a rebuilding process for Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. So instead of getting Devontae Smith at the wide receiver position, instead get the next best available wide receiver, and that is the guy from Florida, Kadarius Toney. Devontae Smith compared to Toney, yeah, obviously tier one, tier two, without question. But with Tyrell Williams as your best wide receiver, you're going to have to go wide receiver first round. And it could be between uh, Kadarius Toney or Rondale Moore. I feel like that the Lions, in my eyes, would want to get the next best available wide receiver. And in my eyes, I feel like that's Kadarius Toney. So, number 19, Kadarius Toney, a weapon for Jared Goff, is going to get drafted by the Detroit Lions. Number 20, this is also the result of another trade, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. Traded back 
with the Chicago Bears. Like we mentioned with the Vikings earlier, they need an edge rusher. They need a cornerback. With them signing Patrick Peterson, I think they're okay with addressing the cornerback position in the second round if they need to. But for the first round, edge rusher is the bigger hole to fill on this Vikings defense. And that's why I have them taking the other Miami edge rusher, Gregory Rousseau, the defensive end, as a priority for the Minnesota Vikings. So Greg Rousseau is going to be with the Vikings. Let's go ahead and update that. 21, the Indianapolis Colts. Oof. With the Seattle Seahawks, and this is a confession, just to let you guys know, I love Chris Ballard and John Schneider so much as general managers. They're The way that they finesse and the way that they sign free agents to all these great deals, the way that they uh, draft as well, I just love it. And Chris Ballard, I believe, is one of the better general managers in the NFL. And I think that they're going to go with another great pick. A guy that falls in their lap is going to be the next best offensive tackle, and that is Christian Derisaw is going to be the next offensive tackle for the Indianapolis Colts. This guy's from Virginia Tech. And they need a replacement for Anthony Costanza, who retired earlier this offseason. Carson Wentz is their quarterback, and Carson Wentz is an investment. And Frank Reich knows this more than anyone. He knows that Wentz is very talented and a good quarterback above average, but he's going to crumble under pressure. Why would you want to risk that and just go ahead and give him an offensive lineman? So I say that they're going to go down the route of an offensive lineman, and Christian Derisaw, in my eyes, is going to be the next best available lineman. So the Indianapolis Colts, uh, Christian Derisaw. Perfect. Now number 22, the Arizona Cardinals are in a good spot, and this ended up being a very good trade. I'm, I'm going to explain why. Because the trade with the Tennessee Titans to move down six spots, because the Titans feel like that J.C. Horn is the best cornerback available, the Arizona Cardinals could also get one of the better uh, the cornerbacks in the NFL draft and Caleb Farley, which people are saying could be the best cornerback in this NFL draft. It's between Sertan, Horn, and Farley, whichever order you want to put them in. The thing is with Sertan and Horn, yeah, that's just opinion. But with Farley, he's falling down at NFL draft boards because of a back procedure that he had that kept him out of his pro day when he was with Virginia Tech. So the second straight Virginia Tech prospect that's going to be drafted is going to be Caleb Farley by, Caleb Farley by the Arizona Cardinals. And this would be a steal if that back procedure ended up just being a, you know, nothing too serious and the Cardinals were to get a replacement for Patrick Peterson. So at number 22, I have the Cardinals taking Caleb Farley. Let's update that real quick. Caleb Farley. All right, so Caleb Farley to the Arizona Cardinals. Number 23, the second of the first-round picks for the New York Jets. Who are they going to take? They already addressed their offense, the biggest need, quarterback, Zach Wilson. Cool. You could continue to give them weapons, okay, but you already signed Tevin Coleman, Corey Davis. They're not going to be game-changing players, but as far as needing to draft a wide receiver or running back in the first round, I think for the time being, since you signed those players, you can hold off until the second round at least. At least get some weapons or some good players for your defense that has not been that good last season. So get someone like Aziz Ojulari from Georgia. He is listed as a linebacker officially. But when I watch tape on this guy, I see him more as an edge rusher, and that's where he excels the most. And the next best available edge rusher, which is a need for the New York Jets, for Robert Sala, who's going to fit in just nice with that defense, I think that Aziz Ojulari is going to do well with the New York Jets. He's going to be drafted by the Jets, number 23, if he were to fall that late. So let's go ahead and change that on our draft board. Ojulari. All right, 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers. This pick is very, very interesting because they have a couple needs that they need to address. They need to address the offensive line needs and the running back needs. Najee Harris is still on that board. And I almost put Najee Harris down for the Pittsburgh Steelers in my mock draft, but then I really thought about it, and I thought about the whole Le'Veon Bell situation and with James Conner coming in and excelling, proving that the the Pittsburgh Steelers could really just put in any running back and they'll just do well. 
We saw it last year with Benny Snell. Now, I'm not saying that Benny Snell is going to be the featured franchise running back of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I think you can hold off for the time being until round two. I mean, there are some pretty good running backs out there in round two. For instance, uh, Travis Etienne from Clemson, he's probably going to be taken early on in the second round. Uh, but you've got both those guys from North Carolina, Michael Carter, Javante Williams. You've got Kenneth Gainwell, uh, Trey Cern from Ohio State. So you can draft them later on. But I feel like at this point, you need to address the offensive line, and you're going to have to get the best interior offensive lineman, the guy from Alabama, Landon Dickerson, to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Again, bolster that offensive line, protect Ben Roethlisberger, even though that line has been great uh, and has not given up that many sacks this last uh, season. You're going to have to improve that run game, which has been a big disappointment for the Steelers last season. It has been the reason why this Pittsburgh offense has been lacking. But I think with the Steelers and Mike Thomas' approach, it's better to get the offensive line and improve them rather than the running back for the time being. That's a bigger priority. Let's go ahead and put Landon Dickerson down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Number 25. The Jacksonville Jaguars are back on the board, and they have uh, an ultimatum to make at this point. Do they want to continue to get some help for Trevor Lawrence? Do they want to continue to improve their defense? What do they do, what do, they do at this point? I'm going to go ahead and say that since it's Urban Meyer and he wants this Trevor Lawrence experiment to work out, go ahead and get your weapons for the offense. You could get a wide receiver. But I think a bigger need is to protect Trevor Lawrence, that rookie quarterback, to make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes and he has the most time available to throw the ball. And that is Tevin Jenkins, the offensive tackle that could be drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he's a guy from Oklahoma State. They need protection for Lawrence. You can focus on the defense in the second round for the time being. Get a good offensive tackle as they are falling and getting off the board pretty quick. Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State to protect Trevor Lawrence. Tevin Jenkins is going to be drafted. All right, number 26, the Cleveland Browns. So originally I had the Browns trading up with the Arizona Cardinals to number 16 to get the best edge available rusher, and that was Jalen Phillips on that draft board. But with them signing Jadavion Clowney just yesterday, I don't feel like they're going to jump the gun just yet to get a good edge rusher in the first round. I think they're going to be fine for just this one-year deal with Jadavion Clowney. Maybe address the edge rusher in the second round. Instead, what you could do with a number 26 pick, you could go down different routes. You could go down the route of corner. Well, they drafted some pretty good corners in the last two rounds, the last two years. I don't think you would really want to do that again. Okay, well, why not get uh, an edge rusher? Well, you could get Jason Owe. But like I said, Jadavion Clowney, you could hold off in the second round. How about a wide receiver for Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns? Jarvis Landry is getting up there in age. Odell Beckham is getting up there in age. There's no solid slot receiver, wide receiver three on that offense. Why not get the shifty Rondell Moore from Purdue to be a Cleveland Brown? When I watched tape of Kadarius Toney and Rondell Moore, I thought that Kadarius Toney was better than Rondell Moore just because Rondell Moore, he, he's shorter and he's smaller in stature and most of his highlights was based off of missed tackles of players hitting him but him having a low center of gravity and still being able to be on his feet. Well, in the NFL, players are bigger, faster, stronger. So uh, it's his game is going to suffer a little bit in the NFL so that's why I have more falling down in the draft board because of that. And I have Kadarius Tony ranked higher. But I think the last best wide receiver available that's worthy of being a first-round pick could be Rondale Moore. And what other team that could draft him than the Cleveland Browns at this point? So at 26, I have the Browns taking Rondale Moore, who's going to be a good wide receiver three or a slot receiver, could develop into a wide receiver two, maybe even a wide receiver one, when Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham's contracts come to an end in the next couple of years. So the Browns, Rondell Moore. Go ahead and update that. Now the Ravens. The Ravens thrive off of multiple 
defensive picks when it comes to the NFL draft. I mean, I don't know what it is about John Harbaugh, but he can just draft all these defensive pieces and they just suddenly do well. That's what the Ravens like to do in their system, and I feel like that's what they're going to do again this year. You lost Matthew Judon, so you could get an edge rusher, but I would say that's your second priority. Your first priority is a safety, and the only worthy talent of a first-round draft pick at the safety position would be Trayvon Morig from TCU. You get a solid safety in that secondary, and you're going to bolster your defense. You could put him in as a rotational player, whatever it may be. However, John Harbaugh on that defense wants to work, go ahead and draft Trayvon Morig from TCU. Now the Saints. Oof. This is also another team that I had training a little bit back if they needed to out of the first round just to acquire multiple draft picks. But I'm going to go ahead and say that they stay put with that number 28 pick and they draft an edge rusher to replace the loss of Trey Hendrickson and Jason Oway, the edge rusher from Penn State. Like I said, Trey Hendrickson, who had 12 sacks last season, went on to Cincinnati Bengals, and Cam Jordan is getting up there in age as well. So you don't know, and you can't guarantee that he'll be along, uh, around for a very long time. I think the future of that defensive line for the Saints is going to be Marcus Davenport and whichever edge rusher they decide to draft in this 2021 NFL draft. Now, at this point in my mock draft, I have Jason Owe as the best available edge rusher. Let's go ahead and type that in. Jason Owe. Let me scroll up a bit in case the lower third were to cut that off. Okay, so number 29, we have the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are very, very interesting because we always talk about Aaron Rodgers needing some weapons for the Packers. Yeah, makes sense. Understandable. Devin Funches being the wide receiver too, eh, could work out. No guarantee. But I think after the disappointing season, or at least in the playoffs, that Kevin King had in giving up a touchdown to Scotty Miller at the end of the half to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think a lot of pressure is put on Kevin King, and I think that they want to go draft a cornerback at this point. So the two worthy first-round cornerbacks I have on my draft board, actually, there's four. They could go down the route of Gregory Newsome. They could go down the route of uh, Asante Samuel, Tyson Campbell, and Eric Stokes from Georgia. I'm going to say that from Northwestern, Greg Newsome is the best available cornerback, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go down the route of any one of those four cornerbacks, Asante Samuel, uh, Campbell, or Stokes. Uh, but I have Newsome personally as a cornerback, and again, it's because of they missed out on the, on the chance of playing in the Super Bowl because of the secondary. Uh, and I feel like to give Kevin King a little bit of a push, who they re-signed, they're going to want to go down the route of cornerback. So Green Bay Packers, Greg Newsome. Let's type that, that in and fill that in. Greg Newsome the second. All right, the Bills at number 30. They also need a cornerback. And they could go down the route of drafting one and Samuel, who's – Probably more than likely not going to get drafted by the Chiefs or the Buccaneers. Maybe they will uh, draft him, but you can go ahead and take him at pick number 30. But I'm going to go ahead and say that they want to address their run defense first. And they only were the defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman, that is worthy of a first-round pick is the prospect from Alabama, Christian Barmore, uh, to be drafted as a defensive tackle. And the reason why I have Barmore being drafted by the Bills is because for the past two years, They've really needed to fix a hole that they've had on that defensive line, especially with the run defense. This past season, they gave up 4.6 yards a carry on the defense. That needs to change. So they want to address the defensive line, and Christian Barmore is the best available interior lineman, only worthy one that is available of being drafted in the first round. So let's go ahead and update that on the draft board. Uh, Christian Barmore. Now pick number 31, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think it's kind of apparent if you follow the NFL who the Chiefs are going to draft. Not which player specifically, but which position they would want to address in the first round. They gave up, or they released Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz, two big, good offensive linemen in their, on their roster. And the loss of Eric Fisher in that Super Bowl proved that you need an offensive lineman so bad and you, you need depth at that position. Still don't know why they released those great offensive linemen. They went on to other teams. 
but I think you'd want to address that need and that hole at offensive tackle. And the best offensive tackle at this point in my eyes is Jalen Mayfield. Could be Alex Leatherwood as well. I kind of debated between which one should it be Leatherwood or Mayfield, but I'm going to say it's Jalen Mayfield off at offensive tackle from Michigan. And again, it's just going back to, you got to adjust those needs. You don't want Patrick Mahomes to run around um, and, and you need protection for him. So let's go ahead and update our board with Jalen Mayfield. That leaves us with the last pick of the 2021 NFL draft, at least the first round. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Man, there's multiple options that they could go down. They could go down if Rondell Moore is still available on the board. They need to address the loss of Antonio Brown, and they could go get Rondell Moore. Other than that, they brought back all 22 starters on that team, so you don't really need to draft someone to be a starter. All you need is depth. So if Rondell Moore is taken, you could take Elijah Moore from Ole Miss to be that number three wide receiver. I think they continue to go down the route of getting more depth on the defensive side of the ball because Ndamukong Sue is getting up there in age, and they want a good edge rusher, and the next best available edge rusher is Joe Treon from Washington. Again, that's just going back to Ndamukong Sue with all the contracts that he has, with them being a one-year, two-year deal, having to resign him for a lot of money. I don't think that's going to last for a very long time, especially uh, given his age, even though he is a very talented player. You want to bring in younger blood, younger talent, and Joe Treon is going to be the best available edge rusher on my board if all of this ends up becoming true. So Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I got you drafting Joe Treon. Let's go ahead and update that on the board. All right. So that is our 2021 NFL mock draft. Let's just go ahead and uh, recap the draft board for you guys. If you would just want to skip all of this and uh, go to the end of the video just to see who we drafted. So pick one, Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence. Pick two, Jets, Zach Wilson. Three, 49ers, Justin Fields. Four, Falcons, Kyle Pitts. Five, Bengals, Jamar Chase. Six, Dolphins, Panay Sewell. Seven, Washington from a trade with the Detroit Lions for Trey Lance. Eight, Panthers, Rashawn Slater. Nine, Broncos, Mac Jones. Ten, Cowboys, Quiddy Pay. Eleven, Giants, Micah Parsons. Twelve, Eagles, Devontae Smith. Thirteen, Chargers, Patrick Sertan. Fourteen, the Bears via trade from the Minnesota Vikings to get Jalen Waddell. 15, Patriots, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. 16, Titans via trade with the Arizona Cardinals, J.C. Horn. 17, Raiders, Elijah Vera Tucker. 18, Dolphins, Jalen Phillips. 19, via trading back with the Washington football team, the Lions get Kadarius Toney. 20, Vikings trading back from the Bears, Gregory Rousseau. 21, Indianapolis Colts, Christian Derrissaw. 22, Cardinals trading back from the Titans, Caleb Farley. 23, Jets, Aziz Ojulari. 24, Steelers, Landon Dickerson. 25, Jaguars, Tevin Jenkins. 26, Browns, Rondell Moore. 27, Ravens, Trayvon Morig. 28, Saints, Jason Owe. 29, Packers, Greg Newsom II. 30, Bills, Christian Barmore. 31, Chiefs, Jalen Mayfield. 32, Buccaneers, Joe Treon. 100% flawless. It's perfect. That's exactly what's going to happen. Leave your thoughts and your opinions down below. Seriously, if you disagree or agree with any of the things that I said, which players go into which team, the logic behind anything, et cetera, et cetera, please interact with us and let us know your thoughts. I love, love talking about the draft. And I love, uh, you know, the buildup and the hype around it as well. Love college football. Love uh, that night as well. But you've been seeing, if you've been watching on YouTube, that we've had this little advertisement on the bottom screen about our NFL Draft live reaction show on April 29th, 7.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You do not want to miss it. It's a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun last year. This year, it's going to be even better. So subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date for more NFL Draft coverage. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Time to Football, our official first round mock draft 
and I'll see you guys next week.